Creek, Camelot Boulevard, everybody else fared great. Uh, we had about 20 guys out there uh, unplugging catch basins, all that wind. We had debris that came down, and the debris was plugging basins. So we, get, we were out all night cleaning those, and we had two uh, tree crews out cutting up trees. We're still cutting them up uh, to, uh, as we speak, and we should be done cleaning up the damage by the end of the week. And to date, we've spent probably $20,000 with uh, 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 the wages and equipment usage right now in the cleanup. Okay. Thank you very much. Hold on, Tom. Hold on. Hold on, Mr. Gali. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could I just ask you a question? Remember I asked you about 17th and Ashland, if you could just say this over. Oh, oh yeah, 17th thank and you. Ashland, the water uh, came up above the curb uh, to the sidewalk, and that's about, no, that's the 100-year storm event or close to it, and that was mm -hmm. calculated. That's, there's going to be a little bit of flooding in the pavement uh, area and intersection, but everything, it worked fine. It emptied out right away. So. Alderman Ballin, hold on, Tom. <laughs> hey, thank you, uh, Your Honor. This is also a, uh, a suggestion of Mr. Eberg also. Um, okay. Uh, so give credit to both of us, if you could, please. Um, the question I would have for Tom, if I could address him, sure. would be how did the sewage plant oh, thank handle it? The treatment plant was fine. Oh, it was a quick uh, downburst, so everything ran off pretty quickly. Uh, we lost power at the North Avenue pump station. The generator kicked in right away. Uh, the water, no high water alarms at any of the stations. Everything worked great as far as the wastewater side. After, thank you, Tom. After, after the, the, uh, the thunderstorm, I drove around with Chief Zire and got to see firsthand uh, the, uh, the great work that our staff does, uh, firefighters, police, and uh, public works. They did an excellent job. Our uh, dispatching unit, uh, dispatcher's unit, did a marvelous job in receiving the calls and channeling them out the, the way they needed to. So all in all, it, it worked out just great. Thank you. <coughs> I'll, I'll call the 12th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Mr. City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Yeah, here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Hiddleston? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Montemayor, Here. Radke, Here. Sagali, Here. Stefan, Here. Susha, Here. Van Akron, Here. and Vanderweel. 16 present. Quorum's present. Approval of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Pledge of Allegiance, I'd ask Alderman Sigali to please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. <clears throat> Madam City Clerk, uh, public forum. Um, first on the list is Scott Lewandowski. Scott, could you give me your home address, please? 2201 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Okay. Thanks for giving me this chance to speak tonight. Last week, Mayor Perez held the last of his listening sessions, and I want to thank Mayor for Perez for holding these listening sessions. I attended 14 of the 16 sessions, and in each one, Mayor Perez explained how deep in trouble Sheboygan is with re spending versus income, and that we have to see what has a higher priority to spend money on compared to lower priority items. We also have to spend the money that we have wisely and not waste it. Yet, this Common Council continues to waste money. The most recent example was at last week's Committee of the Whole meeting, when it was voted on by the majority of the older persons to throw $35,000 of the taxpayers' money away. This was done when a study by experts in their field, which the city paid $35,000 for, was ignored. 
This study reported that the worst site for the new police station was the Vandervaart site, and the best site was on 23rd Street. Vandervaart would also cost $1 million more to build on than the 23rd Street site. But this information from experts was ignored. This is another case in a majority of the Common Council not listening, but being narrow-minded. You were each elected to represent the people and to look at things with an open mind, but you cannot look at the Zimmerman report with an open mind when you vote down the best site and approve the worst site, according to this 71-page report. I have to wonder how many of you even read the whole report. We all need to work together to get city expenses to meet city income. Last year, the Common Council approved spending $10 million for a new police station. This year, you raised it to $17 million, a 70% increase. How many citizens of Sheboygan have had a 70% increase in their income during the past year? And if the police station is built on the Vandervaart site, the Zimmerman report says that it would cost over $19 million, almost 100% over what was approved last year. There is very little fiscal responsibility on this Common Council, which is desperately needed to solve the budget problems we have. That is why I am announcing tonight that I will be running for 3rd District Alderman in the spring 2006 election. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next on the list is Carter Paulus. <clears throat> Carter, could I have your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. And Carter, you will have five minutes. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Boy, this is one I sure would be rather doing something else than this. I was prepared to make other comments, but in light of an original email <clears throat> that came into my possession last week. The events of the last few months must be brought forward and dealt with. This particular email, as written, commits a slanderous act against me by the author, Sharon Winkle, director of the library, in determining that I took a list of Library Foundation board members' information from the library and further asks all board members to close off any communication with me. And here's the smoking gun, right here in black and white. All this started with my simple desire to alert the library and the library foundation of the potential $12,500 a year added earnings from a large bequest to the library last May. The library foundation board list was sent to me and received on May 13th, 2005 from the library secretary. Here's the smoking gun right here. And here is the original list of the library foundation board members as sent to me with my own handwriting filling in the addresses the telephone numbers, and then finding the emails where possible on the internet. It seems to me to think that I have survived over 76 years on this planet, wherein I've, I've had military secret clearances concerning atomic submarines, national Aeronautics and Space Administration stabilization platforms, and many other devices even secret today, along with bonded fiduciary information, responsibilities, broker licenses, management positions, etc. 
which I would throw all away for some email addresses that I'm perfectly capable of finding myself on the internet defies description. I'm angry. I'm incensed. I'm furious. Mr. Mr. Carter, just, we, we want to hear what you have to say, but we need to maintain control. And very, very difficult to do. All this from an officious little bureaucratic library director overpaid $92,000 a year and has no compunction to ask for an additional management raise for the next two years when it is well known the city doesn't have the energy also boggles the mind. And here it is, the entire city's payroll. What a joke. If I had that much fat, I would have been dead a decade ago. These actions become even weirder when we find that, and I learned that this afternoon, not one, but two attorneys and a judge sit on the foundation board and may or may not be aware of this director's specious conduct. And I believe if you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, specious says it all. This conduct continues. The August 25, 2005 library trustee meeting resulted in the library director further accusing me of recording the meeting and then saying so at the end of the meeting. Excuse me, Carter, I'm sorry, the five minutes are up. Are you going to allow me to finish the next two lines? Paula Masusha. I'd like to make a motion to allow him to finish. There's a motion to open the floor to so that Mr. Carter can, can, can finish his uh, words to us. Is there a second? There's a second. Any discussion on that? If not, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Take a roll call. <clears throat> and I would be to allow him to continue. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Asserta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Twelve eyes, four no's. Motion carries. Please continue, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Further, uh, let's see. The 82505 library trustee meeting resulted in the library director further accusing me of recording the meeting and saying so at the end of the meeting, none of which took place. Uh, this behavioral conduct is suggestive of a more superior, uh, serious problem. I believe, as Winston Churchill said, I think enough technical inexactitudes have been committed, and it's a serious problem. I must ask at this time that any further action in this matter will be conditioned on the library director's tenure and that the powers that be I've been asked to change two words and the words I'm using publicly are take action but if you don't know what I'm meaning then I give up. But whatever action the board takes should be done in the best interests of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Given those serious charges, I, I noticed that um, Sharon Winkle is in the, the gallery, and I'd like to make a motion to open the floor to her to respond to these charges. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second to open oh, the. Department. Pardon me? She's a department person. Okay. Wouldn't even have to. Do you wish to respond at all or do you wish to not? I can make a brief statement. 
please do. elsewhere. Um, I would simply say that during the course of the past several months, it's become apparent that regarding public policy related to library operations that Carter Paulus and I disagree. And I find it unfortunate that he has chosen to pursue his disagreement with me in the form of a personal attack. Um, it's okay if we disagree. That's fine. In fact, it's our privilege in this country. But to make a personal attack that's unfounded, um, I don't think is appropriate. It's been made. It will have to be dealt with. I don't think the council floor this evening is the place to do that. I would simply close by saying that although Mr. Paulus has chosen to make a personal attack uh, in the course of disagreements about public policy, that I will not respond in kind. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Winkle. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I remember correctly, when we first started, when, when you became um, our, our new mayor, you had decorum of the council. And part of that decorum of the council was that people were not going to be coming up to the public forum and starting to, I guess, the best word that I would know how to say is slam another person. It's happened when people have talked about all the persons, but you said that was not going to happen, and now you have what took place this evening. And I think, if it, uh, with all due respect, I think this needs to be followed just maybe a little bit more closely, and that people need to understand a public forum is not one that you um, abuse. You're there, we're here to listen to them, but not to go after another person. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Gali. In response to that, there is a very thin line that people walk when you deal with freedom of speech. I did call his attention to order, but I will not deny anyone the right to speech. And if they, we don't agree with them, a lot of times I've not agreed with people. It's just the way it is. But there's a thin line, and I was watching very closely. I just felt that, that it wasn't necessary to, to, to stop until it got to that point where there was a little, a little too much excitement. But I appreciate your, your comments, and you're correct. We, we need to be mindful and watchful of our decorum, not just ourselves, but the gallery also. And I ask for your assistance in that, in that manner. Uh, please keep reminding me, should I forget, I appreciate that. Thank you. We will move on. We have election of Board of Waterworks Commissioner, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, uh, um, I move that the nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot. If more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting continue until one candidate receives a majority. Um, during the past month, I received one nomination and I'd placed the name of Michael J. Schrader into nomination for the Board of uh, Water Commissioners. There's a motion and a second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Nope. I, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if Mr. Schrader wants to say something. Uh, Mr. Schrader, would you like to address the council, sir? I would move to open the floor. There's a motion and a second to open the floor for Mr. Schrader. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Mr. Schrader, please. Thank you, Your Honor. and. Uh, uh, your Honor and the President of the Council and members of the Common Council. When uh, a family or an individual or, or a business uh, chooses to move to a city, uh, they look at the quality of life uh, in that city. And uh, here in Sheboygan, we're blessed with a lot of great things that are part of our city and part of our, our quality of life. We have, uh, uh, we would look at the, uh, s uh, the police protection, fire protection, uh, lack of crime, uh, community efforts to uh, to work together toward uh, things that are needed in the community and uh, and the attitude. And also, water might be an issue. Uh, we're blessed here in Sheboygan being next to a very large body of water. And over the years, we've had uh, uh, 
some issues we've had to address uh, on the water utility board. Um, uh, cryptosporidium, uh, zebra mussels, and more recently water freezing in the uh, intake lines. And the uh, utility and, the, water t and uh, the board members have addressed those issues one by one and continue to advance to, to find uh, corrections to those and, and solve some of those problems. I've had the privilege to have been part of that. I'm certainly not going to be take credit for any of that. It's been an effort of the, the hard work and efforts and a team spirit at the water utility, uh, the superintendent uh, and all the employees and overseen by the Board of Water Utility Commissioners. So I ask that uh, you again uh, look upon my nomination and the election favorably and, uh, and I hope to continue to serve the city uh, with uh, the interests of uh, the citizens at their at the most high level. Um, all these things we've done with the city, uh, uh, water utility has been at no cost to the city taxpayers. It's all been borne by the, the water users. As a matter of fact, our water rates are, if not the lowest, the second lowest in the state of Wisconsin. And we're gonna work to continue that. Uh, we're, we're a rather conservative bunch, and for those of you who might be interested, uh, the remuneration for the water board members is the same as was established in 1929, so that should be of interest to you. So again, uh, thanks for considering my nomination. I ask uh, for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trader. Alderman Eberg. Yes, I would move that nominations be closed and that a unanimous ballot be cast for Mr. Schrader. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Take a vote on that uh, nomination or That's unanimous? fine. That's fine. Unanimous ballot is take, fine. Yep. Take care. Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Trader. Okay. <laughs> Next on the agenda, we have mayor's comments. Wanted to briefly touch on three items today. One, be in the listening sessions that I've scheduled throughout the community. I have held every one of those 16 listening sessions, two in each district, one in the morning, one in the evening. It, they were well attended. I have done three separate ones, one at Senior Center, one at Rotary West, and one at El Trusa. I still have three more to do. That will give us a total of 22 listening sessions. We had about 371 people who attended. Approximately 265 of those were non uh, a duplicated count. So we had 265 new people in all those 16, and all those listen sessions that we've had. The responses were mixed, but there were certain things that kept bubbling up uh, with respect to some of the issues that were important to the city. Some of, the, some of the issues that kept bubbling up to the top, surfacing to the top, were the taxes were too high, uh, shared services and spending, health insurance of city workers, communications and relationship between the council and the citizens. With respect to what was well, can, well in the city government, some of the things that kept bu bubbling up were the garbage collection, police and fire departments. City is good for families and the bus system was good. What was not working well in our city government, taxes and fees, people felt that the, that wasn't one of the things that they wanted or liked. Shared services between the city and the county, people felt uh, needed work. Communications between the council and the citizens, they felt needed work. And the police and the fire get too much money. That was the comments that were made. Uh, with respect to other issues that concern the public during those listening sessions, uh, Four of them were wage, wages and health insurance of city employees, cost of unions, management of city departments, and the common council. Those are the comments that were made in, in that respect. Overall, I consider the 16 and the additional three very, very successful. When we uh, decided to do this, we expected about 100 people, a non-duplicate account. That would have given us a, a, a a good number from which to derive some credibility and some generalization. 
Uh, the fact that we got 371 uh, does the job a little better. So we'll be able to, to continue with the next step, which is to put a survey together and uh, hand it out to the public, hand it out to the employees and anybody else that wants it. The next item I briefly want to touch on is uh, department heads budget meetings. We've completed those. I've met with every department head. We've talked about their budgets, the concerns the city is facing with respect to finances. Overall, I say that department heads were very, very cooperative, very understanding. They understand that uh, times aren't easy right now. We've got some very hard times. Um, I appreciate their, their, their concerns and, and, and their feelings towards uh, what we're experiencing. There are two areas that I would ask the council to please be very keen about and, and, and take a real close look. These are two areas, two departments that we just cannot absolutely afford to, to, to do any more cuts. Uh, those two areas are the uh, finance. Remember, somebody's got to write all those checks out. And city clerk, uh, Sue is just swamped with work. Her work is not going to get any, any lighter. It, it just We just cannot afford to cut any more of her budget. So please keep that in mind. The next uh, item that I'd like to briefly touch on is Spaceport Sheboygan. I was at the last meeting with the SDC. Things are moving along quite well. Um, the consultants are working with a plan on how to raise money. They're putting together a very elaborate pa uh, plan on how to raise uh, $11 million, uh, $3 million from the state and different uh, corporations and $11 million from the federal government. Now that sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but they feel very comfortable that they will be able to achieve that goal. And I, I am just thrilled that they have so much energy and enthusiasm and excitement about the project. I feel the same way they do, and I know every one of you does too, because when the vote was taken to move them forward, the vote was unanimous. The, uh, the uh, SDC meets, I believe, once a month. Paulette Andrews and I meet with them. As, as I get information uh, trickled down to my office, I will present it to you as, as we move along. That will take care of the mayor's reports. Next, we have a hearing to amend the zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 2838 Washington Avenue from Class HI Heavy Industrial to Class SC Suburban Commercial Classification. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard? Is there, any, is there anyone that would like to be heard? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Alderman Groff? Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the hearing be closed. There's a motion to second the closed hearing. Any discussion on that? If not, all those in favor, state aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Consent agenda 12-1 to 12-32. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we do the consent agenda, I'd like to pull forward document 1253. Pulling forward document 1253, report of committee. That's the RC that's from the Committee of the Whole. Um, that recommends the, the addition to City Hall site and the Vandervaart sites as possible locations for the new police station and that all other potential sites be eliminated. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. There's a motion to accept and adopt 1253? There's, yes. There's, is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion? Alderman Eber. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, uh, I will be voting no, and I hope that I can convince seven or eight of you to join me in the process. I think there are a couple of factors uh, that I'd like to discuss. Number one is we've already spent a substantial amount of money of studying uh, all the sites. I wouldn't see anything uh, that would deter us from completing the process by including 23rd Street in the site selection process. Another factor that I think uh, looms large is 23rd Street was the first site chosen overall and also the second site preferred by the police department. A uh, uh, couple of thoughts to consider when you read the Zimmerman report closely. Zimmerman recommends an offset of $1 million primarily to acquire parking in the downtown area. That $1 million uh, 
Uh, he suggests we strategically move to control adjacent properties as they become available to make this campus viable for future councils and the populace. This means taking historic sites off of our property tax roll. Another consideration we need to look at is the courthouse. Uh, I think you can't help but drive down that, those, those narrow streets and find that that is indeed a computer, uh, a computer impacted parking area. Some days I doubt if we could get a ladder truck down there were there a fire in one of those older homes. Uh, the June 28th, uh, 05 memo uh, that addressed that noted that in order for the county to uh, remediate the parking problem, they would have to likely deck the parking lot. That cost would be $3.75 million to put a decking on the parking lot. The alternative is to acquire property in the historic Ellis District and take uh, property uh, off of the tax rolls. Faced with spending $5 million in parking, I find it hard to make a compelling argument for removing the 23rd Street site from consideration. And for that purpose, I will be voting no and inviting all of you to join me. Thank you, Alderman, Ber Alderman D. Burke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll support this and keep 23rd Street site off the table because of the fact all this $3 million parking ramp and that they've been talking for years on this. And they ain't got the money to do it, and they're not going to be doing it. They're, they're nothing but scare tactics. That's all it is. Thank you, Alderman D. Berg. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I heard something tonight, and I think it, it's important to hear that, you know, we didn't waste money with this study. We had them ranked, and, you know, everybody's got a little angle to say, oh, they forgot about this parking lot. They forgot about this. They did the best they could. But the key was they came back and told us, all five of these sites are viable for a police station. So I think we've got to move forward. I support you know, narrowing it down and going forward. There's you know, nothing in my mind that we don't know that we want to know. I mean, if you, you, know, if you haven't gotten it now, you haven't asked for it. Because every time we've asked for information, we've gotten it. We made the decision last week, and I think we should move forward with it. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Stefan. I've gotten many phone calls about the police station over the last two years, and a few of them want the North 23rd Street site, the people who call me, but the large majority say anywhere but North 23rd. So I will stay with my decision and vote for those two sites. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we will call the roll. Okay. This is to accept and adopt the reporter committee. So then I vote would be to do that. D. Berg. Aye. Eberg, no. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, no. Meyer, no. Montemayor, no. Radke, no. Sigali, Stefan, Susha, no. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. Ten eyes, six noes. Motion carries. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, then, I'd like to um, have an, um, a resolution drafted from the floor that would um, state that the police site uh, will be uh, built on the addition to the new police station and uh, that we will eliminate the Vandervaart site. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, oh. Your Honor. Um, I believe there's some additional information that we have. We had requested some additional information on, on what, may, um, what the, um, the um, appraisal is on the uh, Vandervaart property and, and if we need an environmental uh, impact state, uh, study or whatever it may be called. And I believe those things have already been taken care of by the Vandervaart people and that the, the cost came in from their, their study at $1 million uh, $500,000 or something, or $1,900,000? Well, it's $100,000 an acre. Okay, $100,000 an acre. And that they had already done an environmental study that proved that, uh, that they have taken care of that. But at this particular time, I don't believe we as a council can, can afford to spend out money and wait for somebody to, to come and buy it and return to us $100,000 an acre when we're giving up land that's 
only worth $22,000 an acre. If I may continue also, um, supposedly one of the last or, or a couple of the last people that we couldn't get a hold of a week ago, we've now been in contact with or somebody has been in contact with and uh, they had said right now they have no interest in paying $100,000 an acre for, for land that four years ago or five years ago they could have purchased for like twenty-two dollars or $23,000. And based on all that information that um, has been out there and has been gathered either by yourself or your office staff or, or some other older persons, um, I had to make this motion tonight that uh, we uh, eliminate the Vandervaart site and then choose as our uh, new police station site the City Hall um, addition. Thank you, Alderman Carl. Just as, a, as an exp explanation, we did receive today, uh, towards the end of the day, a letter from, from Vandervaart, and I can make copies of this letter available to the Alderman. But one of my concerns was uh, the, uh, the phase one, which, and the appraisal after I gave it a little bit more thought, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, why are we going to go out and spend money to do the same thing that they've already done? Why not ask them to see if they will share the phase one and the appraisal? They shared the phase one. We have a copy of that, and I intend to meet with uh, Mr. Tom Holton and Paulette Anders to discuss that. What they didn't share is the appraisal. They did not share that because they paid $1,900 for the appraisal. If the council wants the portion that describes the appraisal for that property, they are charging us $1,300 just to see it, for a copy of it. My purpose in asking them for the appraisal was one of respect. I did not want to second guess or question their integrity and their numbers. When they said their property was worth $100,000 an acre, I wanted to see their appraisal so that we could just move on. Why spend any more money ourselves? The appraiser who did the appraisal is Mr. Pete Schills from Routman Schills. He is very reputable, very experienced. I talked to a couple of uh, realtors about that, and they told me if that's the appraisal that uh, Pete Schills gave you, that's the appraisal that you're going to get back. So quite frankly, if we go out and pay what you have the opportunity and the liberty to do, you're just going to get a very duplicated appraisal uh, uh, because he's very recognized and very reputable in the community. So the, where we're at now is we have the phase one, and I believe there's a resolution on, on the agenda tonight. We have a copy of their phase one. We have a copy of their letter and their invoice, it tells us that they pay $1,900, but they will not share that appraisal, the actual wording, unless we pay them $1,300. Okay? Under further discussion, Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I won't support the Alderman Groff on the, uh, using the site here because of the fact what you're gonna do is you're gonna box yourself in here, you won't, the parking is gonna be atrocious, and that's one of the biggest problems we have down in this area, is parking. And uh, we're not gonna, be, you're not gonna have yourself a very good functional police department in that little area behind here, I'm sorry. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Gruff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I did look at the parking, and um, Based on the number of officers we have and the, and the staff we have in the, in the police department and the staff we have in the, in the city hall, per se, um, we're operating with that problem right now. And within the next couple of years, um, I think we can look at other situations, um, other parking lots that we do have that we maybe have to take away from, uh, from a parking utility and maybe claim that as our own. And that's something we can do in the future once the station is up and running and once we, we see what... Um, how much of a problem there is with parking. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I received most of my phone calls from my constituents wanting 23rd Street. I did get a call from one family that supported Vandervaart, but after all the information that has come out about Vandervaart, we just cannot afford that piece of land. And I know the police chief made a comment last week on the radio that that's not his problem. The money that we are spending on the property 
They just want to pick a site. But that is our problem. We are here for the taxpayers to represent them. And we cannot just keep spending money we do not have. And as far as parking goes down here, we have a bus system right out here. We can take the bus to work if we have to. We do not have to supply parking. So I am going to support Alderman Groff's resolution to narrow it down to the City Hall site because we cannot afford the Vandervart site. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. If there's one thing I'm happy about Alderman Groff's resolution is that it finally lays the cards out on the table. That if we're earnest about pursuing and looking at Vandervart and keeping an open mind, at least we'd wait until everything was brought in. But I'm just glad that Hopefully this resolution puts everything to rest and where our true intentions are. We're either going to do it here or we're going to earnestly look at Vandervart. Um, but if we're going to be talking about numbers and 23rd Street site keeps coming up, if you do the math on 23rd Street site, the county was asking for $162,750 for the land, $137,500 for the replacement of the salt shed, combined with their assessment value of our parking lot at 326000 and we have to incorporate the $10,000 of revenue that we get for that parking on an annual basis. That comes out to $636.250. Divide that by the 3.60 acreage that is available because I know they've said and come here and says we have four, but up until this point, we are only guaranteed through that resolution 3.60. You divide that out, we are willing to pay for 23rd Street site $176,736.11 per acre out there. But we can't afford Vandervart's $100,000 per acre. Now, if you would incorporate our cost of what we actually built that parking lot for, that's $498,000. So that averages out to $224,513.88 per acre for North 23rd Street site. Now let's look at Vandervart if we're going to be fair. $100,000 an acre times 15 acres. That comes out to $1.5 million. If we do and pursue a land swap deal out at the um, Highway 42, they were inquiring of 20 acres times 22,000, which is what is our going rate in the industrial park area. That's $440,000. So that brings the cost down to a $1,060,000. I spoke with Vandervart, and as the communication which they submitted um, with the meeting that we had to them, that was public knowledge. They're willing to give us some materials at a competitive, competitive price. We still don't know what that will come out to, but we're going to have to minus that off our costs. They're willing to do that for us. Secondly, I spoke with them. They said, and you know what? We'll sweeten the deal even more. We'll give you 20,000 yards of clean fill for your taking. That averages out to about $60,000. So there, we're under a million dollars. Now let me just add this. There's very few things as far as tangible assets that appreciate over time. And one of those things are land and real, well, real estate. This is going to take a visionary mentality. As far as the Zimmerman report is concerned, I think it was said here, wherever we tell him to build it, he's going to build it. If we can work together on keeping those costs down, we can. I think when you put all those numbers together, Vandervart clearly looks like the best site. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Davis. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Uh, either site here is a responsible decision to make to pick the site, either site. Uh, I, I've always said that the Vandervart site will take itself off the table by the cost of the land there. And uh, that's, otherwise, it suits our needs. It does everything we need. We have parking there. We have future expansion. We could, uh, we could sell the land. But right now, in this, in this situation, uh, Vandervart, in my book, took it itself off the table because of the cost. You know, I like, I like both sites. You know, they're my top two picks. But one thing I'm sure I'm glad of is that, you know, we, we finally kicked that dead horse 23rd Street off this, off this council here. You know, and the conversation that's done. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'll support this uh, 
biggest thing with Vandervaart is we keep talking about a land swap deal. The land swap we're looking at is, I believe, in the Heisen property, which is actually not even in the city. It doesn't do the city of Sheboygan any good. It benefits the town of Sheboygan. So where do we come out a winner in this thing? So I'll su support this tonight. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Okay, we will call the roll. Please explain the vote. Um, this is a resolution that's been drafted from the floor. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alderman Graf, but the resolution would basically state that we choose the police site will be built on the addition to City Hall and we will eliminate the Vandervaart site from the running. Is that correct? So an I vote would be to choose City Hall as the site for the police station. Everybody okay on that? Okay, Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Deberg. No. 11 ayes, 5 noes. Motion carries. Back to consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And at this time, I'd like to pull 1265 forward, which was the resolution where we were going to hire an outside appraiser and conduct a phase one environmental. 12, 1255? 65. 1265. 65. And I'd move that that resolution be filed. There's a motion, a second to file resolution number 11, uh, number 121-0506. No, wait a minute. No. Nope. This one right here, 1265. 1265. Yep. Okay, it's on this page here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Motion to file. And there's a second under discussion. Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Paul McGrath. Thank you, Your Honor. Under the consent agenda, which is items 12 1 through 12 32. I would move that we accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, pass resolutions and general ordinances. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion, Alderman Serra. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to refer 1214 back to Salary and Grievance. Second. We don't need a motion. 1214 to where now? Correct. Um, salary and Grievance. 1214 will be referred to Salary and Grievance. We won't need a motion. Uh, a second, Alderman Bird. Thank you. Please note, 1214, salary ingredients. Any other? Alderman Stefan? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I don't wish to, to pull it for a vote, but um, somewhere in 1217 of the various documents we discussed last week at Committee of the Whole, and uh, after going home and, and thinking about it, I think that you know a lot of things were said, accusations were made, and, and the one thing that wasn't said was uh, an apology to Gina Steiner, and I'd just like to tell her, at least on my behalf, I'm, thank, I'm sorry for the way she was treated. Thank you. Apologies noted. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Okay, consent agenda. Going back uh, 12 1, 1232, accepting 1214, which will go to salary and grievances. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1233 to 1235 to be referred. Report of officers. 1236 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Gina Steinhardt stating her, up, stating her upset on how she was treated at a public protection and safety meeting. Is there a motion to accept and file? So moved. There's a motion and a second to accept and file. Accept and file under discussion. Not all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1237 will lie over. 1238, report by the City Plan Commission re rec recommending annexing territory from the <coughs> town of Sheboygan to the city of Sheboygan situated on the south side of Indiana Avenue. Alderman Graf, we need a motion to pass the, what is it, report committee? Sure, and then I would move that the RO be accepted and, and um, passed and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Attorney McLean, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to note for the council's information, 
I believe you all have on your desks a letter from uh, the Department of Administration that came in this morning that uh, found that the, uh, they reviewed the annexation and found, found it to be in the public interest. And it's a uh, statutory requirement. The Department of Administration has 20 days to respond. Uh, and it's statutory that the council review that advice before they take action on the uh, annexation. So uh, it's favorable review on their part. It's advisory, but uh, it's telling you in the state's view that it's in the public interest to do the annexation. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Take your vote. All those in favor, say aye. We, we need to have a roll call. You need a roll call? Absolutely, yeah. Please excuse me. That's okay. We will take a roll call. Okay. Um, Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Deberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 12.39 will lie over to October 17th meeting, 12.40 to 12.48 to be referred, 12.49, I'm sorry, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> if I may just speak on 12.46 to be referred, I'd like to make a motion to file that um, under discussion. There's a motion a second to file 12.46 under discussion. Because it seems to be a state matter, and it's, I think it should be handled internally, so we probably just file it in committee anyway. We will prepare a letter advising the gentleman of that. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, Alderman Vanderweel that this should not be um, being referred to the committee of the whole. We should just file. Thank you. Okay. Any roll call on that? No, just all. Okay. We're going to. Well, there's a motion, a second to file 1246. Any further discussion? Not. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1240 to 1248, as, as we stated earlier, to be referred. Resolutions introduced, 1249 lies over. 1250 to 1252 to be referred. 1253 has been taken care of. Report of committees, 1254 by finance recommended adopting the Vantage Vantage Care Retirement Health Savings Program for Meet Public Libraries. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the two RCs be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second to accept and adopt the pass attached resolution under discussion. If not, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Aye. Eberg, 69. Motion carries. Alderman Stefan, you had a question, sir? Uh, no, I'm just going to make a motion on the next. Okay. I would move resolution 254 and 126.0506 be put upon their passage. Which one? 12, it's 12-55. 12 1255. 12 resolutions it deals with. And you said 1255 only or 1256? Both is fine. We can take them both. I think they're the same okay. issue. And Alderman Stefan on the 1255, that would be the substitute resolution to pass? Uh, no. No. Okay. 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 The, the motion is to accept and adopt the report of committee. No. No? To I file. Just want, I just want to pass the documents as written. And I'll explain that if I get a second. Okay. Okay. There's a, and there's, okay, there's a second under discussion. Alderman Stefan? What's the second? Okay. Um, basically, the issue at hand is the $11,000 for the water feature. The committee took it out feeling it was probably better off spent from private industry. Um, I know we had hoped at that time, I think, to, to get somebody to come forward. At the meeting, it was mentioned that there was possibly somebody who was interested in, in paying the $11,000 a year to keep the water fountain going, but that they wanted the naming rights for it. And I guess I've been told, I don't know if the mayor or Susan Hart, somebody had conversations, and that's not really very doable. 
So I would move that we do as we had originally planned and add $11,000 from room tax dollars to the bid, bid budget on both sides expenses and the income as it was originally written and support that. I think, uh, you know, it's part of our downtown, the ambiance. People are constantly complaining they don't like it running and this is a way of keeping it off the general tax thing and it is, you know, promoting the ambiance of the downtown and tourism. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think that um, the Business Improvement District is going to complement the new Department of Tourism quite nicely. But at this point in time, I don't feel that each of their individual roles has been clearly defined. And what I'm finding is that there seems to be a fair amount of duplication of services in the budget that was presented to finance. And this is my first year going through uh, the budget process as an alder person. But I have reviewed the city budget in previous years. And I know that there's always a comparison of what you're asking for next year compared to the previous year. And that's something we did not have in finance. And over the weekend, when I did look at what uh, the Business Improvement District budget looked like last year and compared it to what they're asking for next year, I, I realized that the Finance Department or the Finance Committee needs to uh, look at this document uh, more carefully because there were line items there last year that completely disappeared this year. This year throughout the entire um, document of their operating uh, descriptions, they have uh, scattered the word tourism development, tourism uh, cultivation, things like that. And that's not necessarily the role of the Business Improvement District. So what I'd like to do is refer 1255 back to finance for a more complete uh, discussion. Thank you. Can we take the, second? was there a second? I'll second that. There's a second to refer it back under discussion. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my first question was on a point of order because I believe this came out of salary, or excuse me, out of finance. finance with the substitute ordinance um, or resolution um, to be put upon its passage. Changing it to the original ordinance is not what the committee recommended to do. So I don't think that first motion can be accepted. Uh, Steve, I'm, I'm going to ask you if that's correct or not. I, I, I think you're right. I was going to clarify it. But, but sending it back to committee will address that issue also. Okay. Attorney McLean, sir. Um, what is typically on the floor uh, as it shows up on the council agenda is the report of committee. Uh, the committee report was to uh, substitute the document and make the change. I, I think procedurally it's best to act on a committee report. Um, however, it's submitted uh, up or down if you vote it down, then you've got the original document to act on. Um, you know, there's also been, dis well, I won't get off on other side issues, but that, that would be the, my general take on it is that properly the, what's before the council initially is the uh, finance committee's report and recommendation, and uh, you should act on their recommendation first, I think, and then to the extent that would would be defeated, then the original resolution would would be on the on the floor. But but we have a motion to refer it back, so that we, would have to be voted on first. Um, That's what we did last time. Can I take precedence? Uh, the commit to a standing committee is. Uh, It's really, uh, it would take precedence, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, it would take precedence. Yeah. Okay, so th there, there is a motion, a second, referred back to committee, and I, I hope that the alderman will support that because then we can clarify all this, bring it back clean, and we won't have to be making any, any amendments or changes to that, to that effect. Uh, uh, under further discussion. Just a question, though. Um, Alderman Stefan combined 1255 and 1256, is that correct? So did you want both to be referred back to? Just one. Well, both, I guess, because, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Alderman Stefan? The other one is the operating plan for the bid, so I mean, I guess they mm -hmm. both have to go 1256 back. 1256 is the Tourism Advisory Committee. Oh, no, I was taking, 
the two documents that are in oh, 1255. Oh, on the same document. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, right. just 1255. Okay, okay, thanks. Right. So, that was the confusion. So okay. the motion to refer back to the committee, finance committee, will be 1255. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand? Good. Okay. Please call the roll. This is to refer back to finance. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Uh, Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1256 by finance uh, recommended establishing a tourist Tourism Advisory Committee for the City of Sheboygan and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the substitute of the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just as a point of information for people, uh, this document, Paul had kind of took the previous submissions that had been brought in, I think, um, by Susan Hunley and Renee, possibly in the lawsuit from Bonnie Serta. Looked outside, got a little and then just made up her own little compilation. It wasn't my doings. I don't have anything personal. If you want to change something or do anything to what we did in finance, and that's fine. But just so you know, that's what she kind of compiled all the different committee members from. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the composition is reflective of a little bit of everybody's input here. Right. So I think it's fair. Any further discussion? If not, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1257 by Public Protection and Safety recommending authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into agreement with the Sheboygan Area School District relative to providing the public school system with school liaison officers from the Sheboygan Police Department. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just a point of clarification, this would be from January 1st through June 30th, 2006, and I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a the, the second to accept and adopt report of committee <coughs> and under discussion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, may I please have an explanation? I thought in years past, I'm assuming this is for the six months, correct? Um, I thought it was we always had it at nine months. Is there a reason why all of a sudden now we're going to six months and six months instead of the nine months for the whole school year concerning this? No, it's actually for a school year, Alam Sigali. The, the problem is our, our calendar year is from January 1 to December. Theirs is June 30th up until the other round. So they have their, their calendar year is out of whack with ours. So when we go to June 30th, we're doing a calendar year for them. OK? Alderman Stefan. Um, I guess I'll support this this time. It, it, it seems like lately we've done it every six months. And I don't, you know, one time we say, well, it's not with their budget. The next time we say, well, we don't want to stop at the middle of the year. Um, for some of the new older people, the Finance Committee did have a discussion on this, well, before this term anyways, how the taxpayers of Sheboygan, obviously, the school people, anybody who's in the school district, everybody pays equal with the town. But the other half is only paid by the city taxpayers of Sheboygan. We got permission and sent out letters to the other towns explaining this discrepancy to them. Um, we got letters back. One was pretty much not interested. The other one said, well, well we kind of agree, but show us the proof. And the other one had the best, uh, said, we agree with you, but we don't see a way to resolve it other than giving it all on the school taxes. And, and I guess, you know, that's my thought is get it all on the school taxes. You know, no, we're not, nobody's saying get rid of the program. It's just they've got more money this year than we do. Let's get it all on, on their taxes. It's more equal to the people than the people in the city aren't subsidizing the town people. And they can feel like they're all the same. So I, I'll support it this time, but I certainly would hope that in six months we don't pay for it again. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. In addition to what Alderman uh, Stefan had mentioned, I was going to ask Alderman Shusha if she knew when you were going to start negotiations for the, the 2006 and 7 school year for this particular program. Because I, I think what finance did last year was, um, was as Alderman Stefan said, went out and asked for um, uh, information as to would you we be willing to do this if we found an equitable way. And I think that's what we need to do so everybody pays their fair share 
as far as um, the school liaison officers go. Alderman Tusha. Thank you. Um, I don't know when we're going to go into negotiations for the next school year, but um, I definitely support uh, what Alderman Stephan said. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we will call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Davis Aye. and Graf, 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced, 1258, 1259, lies over. Matters laid over, 1134, RO number 1249-0506 by City Plan Commission recommending amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 2838 Washington Avenue from Class HI heavy industrial to class SC suburban, suburban commercial classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinance. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? If not, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Susha? Van Akron, Vanderweel, Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1165, resolution number 1210506 by Alderman Graf, Van Akron, and Meyer accepting the liability insurance proposal from cities and villages, mutual insurance company, and continuing member membership in his CIVMIC for 20608 based on the premiums guaranteed by SIGMIC for said policy years. Alderman Graf. Your Honor, that resolution is, and resolution number 122-0506, uh, Council Document 1166, which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in 2005 budget. I would move that um, both those resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Manny. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 1260, a communication from Alderman Danberg asking for a resolution to be drafted to rescind the council's action not to contract with the chamber and asking for a nine-member committee to be formed to oversee what the chamber will do for the city and will work with them during 206. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the document be placed on file. Second. There's a motion and a second to place document on file under discussion. Alderman D. Berg. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> I don't know why he wants to put this on file. We want, you wanted to have a Sit or a room tax committee, and I think because of the fact that the people that were supposed to be working with the Chamber of Commerce the last several years kind of fell down on the job themselves, and they stand here and they were kind of blaming the Chamber of Commerce for not doing certain things according to the contract. When I asked certain people what the Chamber had showed them what they were going to do for the year, they said, well, they just laid it out and they looked at it and they said, well, I asked what do you, if you ask any questions, they didn't ask any question. They just went along with what the chamber was doing. So if they said that the chamber wasn't living up to their contract, it's as much fault as that committee and this council for not overseeing the chamber. So I think that we should, with, with this new committee now, they, they should work with the chamber through the year 2006 and to see what uh, what, what do good they can do for the city because trying to form our own in-house, we're, we're creating new positions on the table of organization when we have a hiring freeze in place right now. So I, I, would, I would hope that they would support uh, my resolution here or my document. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Manorwheel. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Berg that we should work with the chamber if they're willing to work with us. 
with what we have, but I disagree about rescinding the vote simply because a few weeks ago, I made up a resolution to rescind the vote. All I had to do was submit it. It was written, that's all I had to do was submit it. But after talking with members of the community, I decided not to submit the resolution because I felt that it would be better for the relationship between the council and the community to not submit it. Because we can't keep on making decisions and then going back and changing that decision. Once in a great while is okay, but every few weeks it's just ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Wheel. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we just voted on 1256, which passed, which set up a, a tourism committee um, that put into place a tourism committee. Uh, also, regarding um, Alderman Berg's letter, uh, where he has in here that the, the people that worked on the committee or were on the committee, um, what did they do? And um, basically what we did was we got to see the finished product in the various magazines that advertising was, was put in and it was passed around in the magazine if it was um, Midwest Living or the tourism book or the um, oh, there's travel and something else that, that used in several newspapers. And the committee, the CBB committee that I sit on right now was asked, well, the, or wasn't asked really if you approve or not, what they said, this is what, what we have, this is what we did with the money, how does this look? And of course it looked great in the magazine and, but we, don't, we didn't have any say so as far as what should be done or what should not be done. We basically gave our blessing to what was done. And the same way goes for the, um, the nine member committee that I just said, uh, we just established one in, in 1256. I don't know if it was a nine member or not, but, but we did, did establish it. And one thing, the chamber is moving on. After our last CBB meeting, they had a meeting with, with their board of directors and they said, okay, the city has made their, their decision. We will move on with what we're doing and we will advertise and, and do what we did and do what we need to do to keep our tourism group going. And the city is more than welcome to, to join with us and, uh, and do some advertising and do some tourism promotion. And I'm sure once Paulette um, gets her, uh, her total plan in, in place and, and, and out for approval, it will be there. And just to address uh, uh, somewhat the, uh, the, the proposed um, uh, positions that, the, uh, that Paulette has, um, has asked for, uh, we're using less money to pay for those positions, including their, their benefits and so forth, than what the chamber was using to pay for the various positions that, that they had there. Thank you, Alderman Graf. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I really agree with Alderman Vanderweele. I think, uh, you know, rescinding is a good idea, at, you know, occasionally. It's, it's useless if you're going to do it all the time. I, I'm still waiting for somebody to rescind the Walmart vote, so if anybody wants to bring that in, <laughs> that's probably the one hanging out there that I will support. <laughs> um, I think I, I do understand Alderman Berg's concern, and I, you know, anybody who was in finance or even on this floor, I said, we did drop the ball, you know, whether it was the finance committee should have been watching closely. I don't know, you know, we asked and I said, well, who was supposed to do this? And it was just the last administration did it their way. It never followed through. I don't know who was at fault and if it was the finance committee, I'd take full responsibility. But having said that, you know, that's like my 18 year old son coming home drunk and I feel bad because I feel like I've let him down as a father, but it doesn't mean he's not responsible. You know, the chamber knew what the rules were and they were responsible as much as we were. We didn't supervise, perhaps. We didn't have the oversight like we should have. That doesn't alle alleviate them from responsibility of knowing what the contract said and following through on it. And for that reason, I, you know, I also question, you know, we don't have a hiring freeze on right now, do we? No. I didn't think so. No. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman mm -hmm. Seva. Thank you, Your Honor. To address the hiring freeze, um, actually, Alderman Stefan, I believe it was you that said that document should be held until you got back from vacation. So we've been, exactly, so it, it seemed to be a little bit of a timing issue as to maybe we were going to vote on this first and then, then all miraculously that document would come back. But um, I am also, I'm also in agreement with Alderman um, Vanderwilly in that we don't just repeal an issue just for the sake of repealing it. But in um, defense of Alderman Berg's um, request here tonight, there's something has transpired since the last time we made this decision, and that is the cost involved. Um, at our last salary and grievance meeting, we finally got the cost, and I think it's interesting enough that some of the older persons had made that um, recommendation to go ahead and 
forward in house activity without actually knowing the tangible costs. But we do have those today. And we're just so for the public to be aware of that it will cost the city through the room tax dollars, I'll clarify that, $107,000 to start with. Um, also, um, Paulette's time, any time that she spends on tourism promotion will be allocated to that account as well. There also will be the soft costs involved. I understand we might have a consultant come in, take a look at the office, see how we can rework things. Um, there are equipment costs. So there again, I don't know if we're actually achieving that much as far as saving costs in the long run. So I do think it is appropriate that now this decision is, are you going to give your stamp of approval of the costs? I can tell you one thing. Somebody's going to call anybody to pay them to tell them how to move furniture around. It's not going to happen. OK? And Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think adding to uh, Alderman Serta here, another thing that we don't know is advertising for uh, CBB was doing their own type of um, doing their brochures and all that, and then they were taking it to the printer. Are, are these persons that you're going to hire, are they going to do the same thing as what CBB does, and then we just take it to the printer, or are we going to have extra costs with an advertising agent then, and then after they do all the drops? And it goes to the printer, so we have two different costs here. So we have to think about this also. Mm -hmm. And those you. are questions uh, Ms. Anders can answer more accurately for you. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I do remember when Paul Anders presented her plan to us. It was clear, it was concise, it had numbers in it, it made sense, it would definitely be for the benefit of the community. And remember, this isn't coming from the city. It's coming from tourists. Tourists are coming to Sheboygan. We're charging them room tax. They are paying for this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. <clears throat> OK, we will call the roll. This is to file the communication. Montemayor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 13 ayes and 3 noes. Motion carries. 1261 will go to public protection and safety and city planning. Please make note that notation. 1262 will go to Committee of the Whole. 1260, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 1262, a communication from Jerry Hemsing asking that before a decision is made on a police site location, that the council give serious consideration to the attached newspaper articles. We have made a site selection, and we've all read Mr. Hemsing's uh, information, which I'm so glad that he did share with us. So I, make, I move to file this communication. There's a motion to accept and file 1262 under discussion. Any more? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Hemsing's communication was about putting in two satellite police stations and I'll let, let you all know my brother-in-law is an architect and that's what he does he builds police stations and when I asked him what he thought would be the best site in Sheboygan he told me you build two satellite stations he said that is the future of police stations right now so I just thought I would share that thank you Alderman Meyer okay we will call the roll we can just do an all you do file do you want to just file? Sure. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. 1263, an RO by the city clerk submitted an application for a private, private well permit for Mr. James M. Bergschultz. Is there a need a motion to accept and file? Alderman Graff? I would make a motion that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. The application is absolutely incorrect. It is not complete. Uh, item number one under the second line is, does not state whether or not this is served by a public water system. So I do feel that the application is incomplete and should not be passed. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. 
Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. I'm sorry, Alder McGraw. <laughs> so if we vote to accept and file, are we not passing this or are we? You're passing it. So Alderman Bauman, who takes care of these? Um, this, com uh, this comes out of building inspection. This is the standard form they use for everyone that you pass. Mm -hmm. Which number were you talking about, Alderman Bauman? Yeah, second number one on the It says, is property served by public water system, yes or no? There's no answer. Alderman Bauman, are you suggesting that it be filed and that he be asked to re redo his application? Right. Um, Steve. I'll, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I don't know the answer, yes or no. I'm assuming, you know, there's no reason not to, that. The answer to that is yes. That, that's the whole purpose of uh, this application. This is a, a new application. He had uh, a well, private well permit going back to 1990. They're good for five years. Uh, he's obviously submitted a renewal. Larry Hilbelink has certified that there is no cross connection between the piping of the public water system and the private well. The only, uh, the only rationale for uh, making this application is to allow them to continue to keep a private well, uh, but it's just for lawn watering and so forth. Uh, uh, you know, you can, I guess I wouldn't suggest denying it. If you wish to have that clarified, you could refer it back to. Uh, uh, Doesn't see. Or okay. just, just hold it. Uh, and have that clarified for the next meeting, but uh, I really don't think that there's much an issue that, uh, in fact, he's served by a public water system. Alderman McGraw. Your Honor, then I would move that the application and the RO be held um, until our next meeting uh, for clarification purposes. And then the, there's a motion and a second to hold. Any further discussion? Alderman Bauman, okay with that, sir? Thank you. We will take the vote. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1264, an RO by the Historic Preservation Commission recommending authorizing the Lyle Mong and American Veterans Memorial Committee to erect a memorial honoring those who served in the secret war in Laos in the land park. Alderman Sagali. A motion to accept and file. <laughs> Thank you, you scared me. I'm sorry. I catch you off guard, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Um, Motion to accept, accept and, file and file and pass the resolution. And pass the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. I'm sorry, I caught you off guard. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bowman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Kittleson, aye. Manny, aye. Meyer, aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Where are these going? You didn't put where they were going. Oh, gosh. I'll sit next to you. Hmm? Just take mine. Right okay. Here. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Attorney McLean. Oh. Alderman Serda? Um, My apologies. Forgive me. I, I didn't realize that's right. We still have to do other matters. I was just going to ask um, Mayor if we could formally contact me, um, Vandervart, just the courtesy to let him know what our decision was tonight, if we could send a letter to them. That is a good idea. Would you like a written letter or a call? A written letter, please. A written letter will Thank do. You. Thank you, Alderman Sarda. Uh, Attorney McLean, other matters? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 1266 is a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration stating that they do not object to the final plat for Green Meadows. That will go to city plan. 1267 is a communication from Carter Paulus concerning issues he is having with the Mead Public Library. And that will go to the library board. 1268 is a resolution approving the revised capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period 2006 through 2010 and adopting the 2006 program for implementation. Finance. That one lies over. Finance. City plan. I'm sorry, oh, that's city right. Plan. That that's will right. be referred to city planning. And 1269 is communication from Beth Pinter concerning possible sites for the future dog park. And that will go to public works. Excuse me, Alderman Graff. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to point out to all the aldermen that they had copies of this Wisconsin Legislative Council Act memo uh, that was included in their packet. Um, Mr. Uh, James Boren was going to be here this evening to speak, but he had another meeting that he had to attend, but he will be coming to our next council meeting to speak on this, and just to give you a heads up on it all. Hold on, we got one more. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I apologize for being shook before. What if we should also mention that on uh, the 24th of this month that the dedication will be taking place down in D-Land Park when it comes to the Hamung uh, Memorial, and I think it would be very nice that the citizens of Sheboygan do take an interest and that they come down there and support the people who supported us in the war. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bauman? Alderman Bauman? And there's a motion to second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. <laughs>